Hi, I'm Andrew Peacock, and this is my good friend Charlotte. And we're staying at home, and we're staying safe, because that's an important thing for us to do in these difficult times. When things get challenging, our pets become even more important to us than they are usually. I thought I'd like to read to you today from my book, One Brave Boy and His Cat. One Brave Boy and His Cat came out last year from Flanker Press, and it features the beautiful paintings of Angie Green. Charlotte, do you think we could just start into it now? Okay. So here's the cover of One Brave Boy and His Cat, and on the front you can see the boy and the cat both have masks on. So they're kind of like superheroes. They're going to be very brave in this difficult story. Shall we start? One Brave Boy and His Cat is for anyone who has ever loved a pet, and I'm sure that's a lot of you. On a beautiful day in late summer, a sleek red car rushed into the vet clinic's driveway. A young couple and a small boy jumped out and ran towards the door. So here you can see Angie's painting of the family driving up to the vet clinic. The red streak bundle that the man held in his arms suggested that something terrible had happened. Now that doesn't sound good, does it, Charlotte? A red streak bundle, they're not, doesn't sound real good. So there's a family coming into the back clinic. The woman had tears in her eyes and began speaking as soon as she stepped inside. I only opened the door for a second and Susie got out. She ran to the road, and the car went right over. See that, Charlotte? There's the, the cat. And you can see there's poor Susie running out in front of the car. And you notice that there's a, a butterfly that she's chasing. Now, you have a look at the book sometime later. You can see that the butterflies are important in this story. The mother turned to her son and placed both of her arms on his shoulders. Nick, can you wait in this room while Dad and I go in and get Susie looked at? Sure, Mom. So there's Nick talking with his mother. The vet took the cat from the man's arms and placed it on the table. The car had driven right over Susie's back. Can you imagine that? Her legs were in a position that didn't look right, and when the vet touched her, she didn't move. So here's inside the vet clinic, and they're examining the poor cat. As the woman sobbed, the man spoke to the vet. Can't you fix her, doctor? I'm sorry, but there isn't much we can do for injuries this bad. So we here we have the poor cat up on the table and the veterinarian talking to the father. So this doesn't sound too good. The man leaned across the table. Can't you do something? As the vet described the animal's injuries, the man continued to insist there had to be something that could be done. It took him a long time to understand how badly his pet had been hurt. So there's the man, and he wants something done, but it doesn't sound like there's much can be done for poor Susie. And the father said, okay, we'll put Susie to sleep. The man was only able to blurt out these words before looking away. He turned back, and he wiped his eyes and rubbed both of his hands on his pants. Poor fellow, eh? There's the father. He's not very happy with what's happening. Here's what's going to happen. We'll call Nick in. You tell him that you're going to see what you can do for Susie. Give us 10 minutes to get home and then call us and say she didn't make it. So the father's saying that he wants to tell Nick something that's really not quite true, is it? It's not so good, Charlie. And the veterinarian says, I'd rather be honest with Nick. Let me talk with him. But he's only seven years old, the mother protested. And the vet asks, is Susie Nick's cat? Yes, he's looked after her for two years. If Nick is old enough to have a cat, he's old enough to be responsible for it. So there's a veterinarian talking to the family, saying that Nick needs to be responsible for his cat. So the veterinarian goes out and he talks to Nick in the waiting room. Nick, Susie isn't very happy now, and we have no way to make her better. Nick looked up. What are we going to do? When animals are really hurt, Sometimes all we can do is put them into a sleep. They won't wake up from If they can't get better, it's the only way we can help. So here's Nick out in the waiting room. See, he's reading a 
comic called Super Cat, kind of like the cat on the front. Sure. Did you see that? See Super Cat there? The vet called Nick into the examining room. Come and have a look at Susie. She's smashed up pretty bad, isn't she? Yeah, that's gross, said Nick. Her back and her legs are broken, and she's really hurt a lot of things inside. I wish I could fix her, but I can't. Nick looked up over his side of the table. See Nick there? And ran his hand over Susie. You see? That's Nick. So there's Nick looking up over the table. And he sees that his cat is hurt pretty bad. Nick sighed, but there wasn't a tear in his eye. I guess we better put Susie to sleep. I don't want her to be unhappy. Can you tell your mom and dad about this? Nick shrugged his shoulders. Sure. The vet called the parents back in. Nick wants to tell you something. Mom, Dad, we have to put Susie to sleep. She's suffering and we can't make her happy again. When the parents turned away from their son, Nick reached up to hug his mother. That's okay, Mom. Susie will be happier this way. So there's Nick explaining to his parents what they have to do with poor Susie. Nick's words didn't stop the tears of his parents. They felt pain from losing the family pet and relief from making the right decision. But more than anything, they felt proud of their very brave son. And there's the family walking away at the end back to their car to leave. So that's the story of one brave boy and his cat. Sean, it's not a, not a real happy story, is it? But it's an important story. It's important that we remember that sometimes doing the right thing for our animals is not doing the easy thing. And we need to do the right things when our pets really need us. Thanks very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the story.